Well, welcome to our News Weekend. Coming up tonight, Attorney General Ryan Pinder calling on attorneys around the country to diversify their expertise. Also, police investigating a double stabbing at a local nightclub. We have the details straight ahead. And later, economic collaboration. The Minister of Economic Affairs speaking at the Afri-Caribbean Forum. We have his full comments when our News Weekend returns. This is our News Weekend. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Italia Hall. The Office of the Attorney General is calling on lawyers nationwide to evolve and broaden their horizon in specialty areas. The Bahamas Bar Association meeting this week where lawyers were encouraged to hone their skills and develop professionally. Our Joshua Williams reports. Attorney General Ryan Pinder calling on attorneys around the country to diversify their expertise in areas of knowledge and specialty areas. His comments coming at the Bar Association training day is held at the Atlantis Resort this week. With the world rapidly advancing, the Attorney General encouraging lawyers to get up to speed. He says they should focus on five areas, the first being taxation. If you look in the dailies, almost every single professional organization in the Bahamas, inclusive of law firms, are actively recruiting for tax practitioners. Every single one. The reality of the situation is the Bahamas does not have enough trained tax professionals. Then there's the area of intellectual property, something cabinet is looking to bring to parliament soon with the goal of modernizing and reforming intellectual law framework. All of this will require expertise in international property law. Whether to provide registration or structuring advice, or to defend your client's intellectual property rights in the court of law. Today, I could probably count the attorneys with intellectual property expertise on two hands, if not one. There's also a new area that many do not think of, space law. With the proliferation of the private space exploration companies, and the interest we see by these very same companies in the Bahamas, either as a jurisdiction for re-entry, such as SpaceX, or for launches. There are private space companies inquiring of the Bahamas as a launch jurisdiction. And finally, energy law. You might know we recently passed a new Electricity Act and a new Natural Gas Act. And the Prime Minister just announced major reforms in energy generation, transmission, and distribution. A key component of these reforms is the expansion of generation via independent power producers and the sale of that energy via power purchase agreements. Each of these requiring specialty agreements and specialty skills in the context of energy. Reporting for our news, I'm Joshua Williams. Well, police are currently investigating a double stabbing that has left Two men in hospital receiving medical assistance. Police say the incident occurred at a nightclub on Nassau Street around 4 this morning. Now additional details surrounding the incident are unknown at this time. While well, the third Afro-Caribbean Trade and Investment Forum highlighting socioeconomic aspirations. Minister of Economic Affairs Michael Halkita is telling attendees that our cultural ties and similarities must be the bridge to cooperating and collaborating toward common ambitions. Our cultural ties and similarities must be the bridge to cooperating and collaborating so that we can attain our common ambitions and break free from the traditional labels of third world developing nations and develop a common path to sustained, balanced, and equitable economic growth. The more events such as this that our respective regions organize the stronger we will become collectively. The minister says he believes the Bahamas and the wider Caribbean have long been over-reliant on imports for economic sustainability. He says the COVID-19 pandemic was an eye-opener for global trade and the weaknesses of our traditional economic strategies. This has subsequently led to a much greater regional focus on economic diversification and the need to strengthen economic ties with like-minded nations such as those of our brothers and sisters across the African continent. There is an estimated $1 billion in export potential between Africa and the Caribbean, emphasizing the need for stronger trade relationships and the removal of barriers such as high tariffs and non-tariff barriers. 
The potential benefits of such collaborations could include increased competitiveness for small businesses, access to new markets, and the promotion of sectors ranging from food to tourism. Well, Grand Bahamian pilots up in arm about an increase in inbound and outbound fees for aircraft. This change will come into effect on July 1st. The pilots say they believe this will have a negative impact on the aviation sector. These pilots say they are disappointed in the recent increase of international inbound and outbound fees, as they say it amounts to a 500% increase. Private pilot Ricardo Munning says the inbound and outbound fees for him was originally $50, but it's now $150, which is a total of $300 per flight. I fly multiple aircraft, actually. I may have two flights a day, sometimes three. You know, so that will add up very, very quickly. Pilot Jamal Johnson says there was also an increase in departure tax earlier this year, and this is yet another blow. To get a notice saying that not only do you have to pay departure tax, you have to also pay a fee to leave the country is, I think right now is a bit insane. So now you have to spend $31 on each person leaving the country, as well as $150 for the airplane leaving the country. So that's a substantial increase. Munning shares some people may think the issue is insignificant, but some owners of these aircraft may see the increases as an extra burden. Sometimes in the summer, they may do three trips a week, okay? That's now $900 a week in fees, and times that by sometimes uh, every week, uh, you know, um, we're looking at $3,600 $3, a month. As for the tourism sector, they're going to get hit with this that one time, and that may be the last time they come. They're then going to go back to their friends and their, their communities, and they're going to put that out on their um, aviation community uh, pages. Munnings also questioning the fees associated with the amount of seats on an aircraft. Well, some of these aircraft that we fly, um, yes, they have six seats, but you know we, we take seats out. There are, some, there are some owners that fly with four seats in the aircraft. So how does that affect, you know, the cost as far as how do, how do they determine w what kind of cost that will be? When our news weekend comes back from the break, Bahamian women entrepreneurs shine at the Fraxham Bank Conference. Hear how they plan to authentically Bahamian products, plan to take authentically Bahamian products to the world. Plus, men on a mission, a special Father's Day concert to benefit the Simpson Penn Center for Boys. Those details when our news weekend comes back from the break. Are you or a loved one under medical care? Do you need affordable medical supplies? Ports International is the largest home health care supplier. Medical supplies at the very best price. And you can even shop online. From hospital beds to wound care, wheelchairs to walkers, Ports is a one-stop shop for your medical supplies and we accept insurance. We have online shopping and two locations to serve you at the Airport Industrial Park and Shirley Street. We also ship to the Family Islands. Shop online and visit us on Facebook. Call Ports at 377-1771. The Fraxham Bank General Meeting happening this week, a space dedicated to Bahamian entrepreneurship and collaboration, thanks to a collaboration between the Bahamas Development Bank and UN Women, a selection of Bahamian women entrepreneurs who had an opportunity to showcase their authentically Bahamian products. Our Megan Shepard reports. Thousands of African and Caribbean delegates convening in the capital to push Afro-Caribbean collaboration. Looking to take advantage of the historic opportunity, Bahamian women entrepreneurs. These businesswomen share the authentically Bahamian products they're hoping to push to the international market. That it features Bahamian sea salt. I have an environmental background, so being able to support the green economy, sustainability, our natural resource, and of course, keeping the money within the economy is very important to me. So Isa Bahambe, um is a brand that uses Bahamian language words and phrases and puts them on t-shirts. Um, so I have a different array of 
t-shirts and hats here today, um, which is really cool because it sort of expands on 242 to the world. So showing this brand and showing the language to people from all over the world who are interested in culture and um, the Bahamian language. It's pretty much kind of like a small selection of, um, I guess, my collections over the last couple of months. Um, so I've had basically my launch of a few of my Kung Shell products. They add that on day one, business cards were exchanged and sales were made. They say they are grateful to be a part of the event, which highlights the talents of Bahamians and allows them a platform to share their products. It is an excellent opportunity to interact with persons from around the Caribbean, um, from Africa, and really kind of merging that connection within the Afro-Caribbean region. I've had a great response so far. I've made a sale. I've had persons come from different parts of the world to really kind of check it out. And it really gives me a deep sense of pride to be able to represent the Bahamas in this way and really showcase our natural resource at the same time. So I'm really, really thankful and honored to be here today, to be chosen to be um, a representative of the products that we sell in the Bahamas. I'm really excited to just continue to share Bahamian language with the world. I mean, I've already gotten two sales, which is amazing, but I think just the uh, opportunity to share like how we just talk um, and our different words and phrases and how much they're significant to culture in the Bahamas is a huge opportunity. Yeah, it, it definitely opens up a lot of doors. Um, I, it definitely makes it a lot easier in terms of communication because, you know, they're right there. You know, you can just walk over, say, hey, how you doing? My name is so and so. Um, and then you pretty much get to know each other, get an idea of what they do. And, you know, maybe even in the future have collaborations. I already had someone give me their card and the Bahamas Agricultural and Industrial Corporation also with a presence, representing very small businesses. Officer in the Entrepreneurial Planning and Development Department, Nathania Bastian. And here today we have representing some of our businesses that are focusing on shelf-stable foods, jams, hot sauces, condiments, wonderful additions that are really prized. And then additionally, we have Bahamian businesses that love other natural materials. So you'll see shell jewelry, you'll see straw baskets, you will see wood craft that is just amazing and top notch, especially for our wine drinkers. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. Well, this Father's Day, Men's Mobilization Mission will be paying tribute to all fathers with the Tenors United Mandate Father's Day Special Concert. The event seeks in part to raise funds for the chapel at the Simpson Penn Center for Boys. Men's Mobilization Chairman Mario Moxie stressing the importance of this initiative. One of the things we're most proud of is the fact that proceeds from this concert will go towards the Simpson Penn Boys uh, Center for Boys where uh, focus would be placed on the chapel. The chapel is being used for visitation. It's also a place of worship. And so we figured we ought to help and assist them in enhancing the atmosphere of the chapel and making it conducive for families to come and visit their, their sons. The men say that this is just an extension of the men's mobilization march. Now the benefit concert will take place this Sunday at Southland Cathedral Soldier Road at 7 p.m. Local artist Oslin Jadort says he hopes the event serves as an inspiration for fathers, particularly as he believes there's a lack of events and hype behind Father's Day when compared to Mother's Day. The immediate impact is that everyone that walks through those doors, particularly men, particularly fathers, we were really hoping that this would be uh, some, something that kind of helps them to be inspired, to be encouraged. It has been an awesome experience from rehearsals and from persons who would have seen clips from rehearsal. Everybody was curious as to what's going on. And so it's been positive. Still to come on our news weekend, need a last minute gift idea for dad? Well, the fathers of our news got you covered. But first, Coach Yo hosted a free basketball clinic today and we catch up with some Davis Cup tennis members. Our Sports Weekend is up next. No travel, no problem. Summer is here. Whether you're fighting to stay cool or heating up the fun, our news weekend is your guide to the ultimate staycation. We're talking all of the hidden gems right in our backyard, from the hottest bars and lounges to the coolest excursions and events in town. So stay cool, stay local, and stay tuned. Tune in every Saturday to make sure your summer staycation is an unforgettable sensation. Only on our news weekend.
This is our news. Welcome back. Coach Yolette McPhee McEwen doing our part to inspire the younger generation of basketball players. And the Davis Cup competition kicks off next week. Our Sasha Lightborn is here for the weekend edition of Our Sports. Thanks, Natalia. Good evening. Welcome to our Sports Weekend Edition. I'm Sasha Lightborn in for Tage Adderley. Coach Yolette McPhee McEwen is a decorated Division I coach in the United States who was born and raised in Grand Bahama. Last summer, she held a free basketball clinic in Grand Bahama. This year, she brought the clinic to New Providence. For me, this, this really reminds me why I do what I do. It's not for the money. It's not for the prestige. It's to give hope and it's to develop young people and this is my ministry right coaching so uh and development and that is one of my models to teach develop and inspire coach Yolette mcphee McEwen hosted a free basketball clinic at the candle isaac's gym today for first through eighth graders through her foundation no ceilings she says clinics like hers are fundamental to growth and the children agreed i learned how to dribble and cross over we learn how to lay up, we learn how to bounce pass, chest pass, and dribble. And the plan is to take the camp to the family island soon. I want to go to every family island that has kids that are interested in playing. I don't want it to just be Freeport and Nassau. I want Exuma next. I want to go to Bimini. I, anybody that, that shows interest, that's where we're going to go. Last month, we introduced you to Michael Major Jr., a tennis teen phenom. Since then, Michael was named to his first senior Davis Cup team. We caught up with him and some of his teammates at the Balmoral Club earlier this week. And may we introduce you to Michael Major Jr. The day we interviewed Michael, he had just turned 18 and had already racked up many accolades in his tennis career. We caught up with him earlier this week as he is one of the members of the Davis Cup team set to compete in Paraguay from June 17th to 22nd. It's very special to be a part of the team, you know, representing my country for the first time on the men's national team. You know, I've represented the country on the junior level before, but to finally make my first men's team at 18, you know, it feels really good. We also spoke to his teammates, Dante Ambrister and Denali Nottage. Well, the overall goal for the tournament is to obviously make it out of the group into zone two. And then we all know that's going to come with challenges. So we're going to go there as one. We're going to represent the hardest we can. My expectation is to, you know, like always, just go ahead and play our best uh, form of tennis and to be one of the three teams to get promoted into the next zone. Finally, one of our senior collegiate athletes is entering the transfer portal. Bahamian national record holder in the men's javelin, Keyshawn Strawn, will be leaving Auburn University. Strawn made the announcement on his Instagram page yesterday, expressing his gratitude for the journey he had at Auburn. He said he's entering the transfer portal to, quote, explore new opportunities for growth both academically and athletically, end quote. Strawn turned in a strong performance at the National Collegiate Athletic Association Division I Outdoor Track and Field Championships, finishing fifth in that event at Hayward Field in Eugene, Oregon. His eyes are now set on the Olympics in July and qualifying for the World Championships in Tokyo, Japan next year. Now, before we go, John Quell Jones and the New York Liberty played the Las Vegas Aces earlier today. We'll update you on that score tomorrow. That's a wrap for sports this evening. For our Sports Weekend, I'm Sasha Lightborn. Still to come on our news weekend, the inspiring story of the 2024 Primary School Student of the Year. Hear how the 11-year-old balances extracurricular activities and academic excellence. Stay with us. No travel, no problem. Summer is here. Whether you're fighting to stay cool or heating up the fun, Our News Weekend is your guide to the ultimate staycation. We're talking all of the hidden gems right in our backyard, from the hottest bars and lounges to the coolest excursions and events in town. So stay cool, stay local, and stay tuned. Tune in every Saturday to make sure your summer staycation is an unforgettable sensation. Only on Our News Weekend. Welcome back to our news. The prestigious Bahamas Primary School Student of the Year Awards program has concluded for the 2024 school year, honoring some of the nation's brightest students. This year, 11-year-old Abigail Moss was named the 2024 Primary School Student of the Year by the organization.
It's a big responsibility because not only am I representing my school, but I'm also representing an organization. Representing St. Francis and Joseph Catholic Primary School, 6th grader Abigail Moss emerged victorious from a pool of over 100 nominees as this year's Bahamas Primary School Student of the Year. She shares her feelings leading up to the big moment of her name being called. I was like, no way that's me, because I was like, because in the beginning, when they first called my name, I was a little bit disappointed because, well, I thought I was, I got the lowest place my school has ever gotten. But then when I came back down, I realized something. My envelope was different from the other people who were sitting around me. In addition to serving as a senior prefect, being a dedicated Catholic and an active participant in various clubs and community activities, she also maintains an impressive 4.0 grade point average. Well, it really is a struggle, but my friends and family members help push me along. Well, everyone has a village, and my village is very big. And when I say very big, I mean extra, extra big. Principal Tiffany Glass says Abigail's overall intelligence and character led to her nomination. Abigail is so conscientious. She is so willing to do her best always. She strives for excellence. She is one who you can call on to do almost anything. And what we love about Abigail is her very effervescent spirit. She's always smiling, always bubbly. And so we just, um, we just really love and appreciated all that she is doing for the school and also for Catholic education. Moss even caught the attention of Prime Minister Philip Davis, who congratulated her on this accomplishment last week in the House of Assembly during the budget debate. Yeah, having spent the previous evening celebrating at the Primary School Student of the Year Awards, and on the Saturday evening I was keeping a watchful eye out for the winner. And what a very impressive young lady she was, is, and I say congratulations once again to the overall winner, Abigail Moss. Reporting for our news, I'm Megan Shepard. All right, congrats to Abigail. A light rain in the capital on this Saturday, but conditions are expected to improve tomorrow. Meteorologist Ian McKenzie is in the Weather Center with more details. Ian? Thanks, Natalia, and good evening, Bahamas. Welcome to your Saturday evening forecast. Currently outside our studios, we're under cloudy skies with a temperature of 85. Winds are from the east northeast at 10 miles per hour. Comfortable feels like temperature of 76. Current temperatures across the country at this time in our nation's second city, Freeport, we have 83, also in Alice Town, as well as Governor's Harbor, Eleuthera, 82 in Marsh Harbor, 85 in Nichols Town and in the capital, 84 also in Great Harbor Key. In the central Bahamas, we have 85 in Camps Bay, 83 in Georgetown, Deadman's Key, and in Arthur's Town, Kid Island, 81 in Coburn Town, San Salvador. For the Southeast Bahamas, we have 84 in Duncan Town, Ragged Island, 83s in Delectable Bay, Colonel Hill, and in Abraham's Bay, Meguano, a pair of 86s in Matthew Town, Inagua, and 86 also in Providencialis, Turks, and Caicos. Satellite and radar imagery continuing with some residual moisture across the extreme northwest and portions of the southern northwest Bahamas. One or two spotty showers elsewhere dry. Air should be filtering into our area as well as some Saharan dust in the central and southeast Bahamas, which should spill, spell some dry conditions through Father's Day. Northwest Bahamas, boating conditions, winds variable at 10 knots or less, seas 1 to 3 feet, low tide at 10.05 p.m., high tide at 3.55 a.m. tomorrow. In the central Bahamas, good boating conditions as well, winds northeast, east 10 to 15, seas 2 to 4 feet over the ocean. For your extended forecast, as I mentioned earlier, Father's Day should be lovely. Some brightening, sunny conditions, 88. That should continue through about midweek. We have some showers popping up here about uh, midweek through the weekend. We expect some tropical conditions possible. We expect a low pressure system just to ride to the north of our area. So we want to continue to monitor those conditions as we are in the hurricane season. Low temperatures only getting around to the mid to upper 70s, keeping things on the cool side. That's a wrap in the evening forecast. Make it a great, safe, fun night, everyone. Well, Father's Day is just hours away, and if you're still stuck on what to get Dad for the big day, well, we've got you covered. The Hour News fathers are telling you what the men really want, and hint, it's not crab and rice. Roger. <laughs>
<laughs> I want a makeup for all the other part is doing a 72 ounce stick. That's me. Um, when I say this, my wife would know where I'm coming from. I want a jet ski. What did I say? L O V E, love. I want no crab and rice. I always forget crab and rice. I want the love on Father's Day. But let me take this opportunity to say Happy Father's Day to the fellas I'm out there, especially the door and that. Yeah, Happy Father's Day. No crab and rice, please. And of course, if you need more suggestions, you can catch the full video on the Our News social media pages now. Well, with that, we thank you so much for joining us for our news weekend. On behalf of the entire team, I'm Natalia Hall. Have a safe and wonderful evening.